Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. Here we are again with Mark Spencer, and this time you're going to show us some really cool stuff with audio in Final Cut Pro 10. Yeah, audio. So, audio. Um, and you know, I'm usually doing motion, but the fact is, you and I, we make a lot of tutorials, right? Yep. And uh, a lot of tutorials. And we record voiceover frequently. And, Soundtrack uh, Pro is my tool of choice. Soundtrack Pro has been my tool of choice until Final Cut Pro 10 came along. And you can actually yeah. edit voiceover in Final Cut. You, you can do everything in Final Cut Pro 10. So I just want to show you, and this, this is actually useful even if you're not doing your own voiceover, but you could be doing a temp voiceover track for a documentary or something, or just editing audio that's part of something you shot. And it doesn't matter, but if you want, do you want to record your own audio in Final Cut Pro 10 under the window menu, which you might not think to look there, uh, but there's your- It is your, odd that it's in the window menu. Yeah, it used to it? be tools, you tools, know, yeah. Right. And now there's this record audio under the window menu, and it just brings up this nice little, basically a HUD kind of interface, and you click the red button and you record. And what'll happen is it'll, it'll drop it in the current uh, timeline, and it'll also uh, drop it into a selected event. For so you. an event and, and or timeline. Yeah, it actually will, will do both. It always puts it both in an event and a timeline, as far as I can tell, but definitely an event. You choose your input device, um, whatever's connected. I use um, a little Rode uh, pack, as you can see there. This is my... Um, That's your studio setup at home. This is my little studio setup. I have a you know a little boom with a microphone. Uh, this is a Rode Podcaster microphone. I like the sound. It's a good sounding microphone, and that way I'm, I'm not touching it, interacting with it, trying to keep the same distance and everything. So that's what I use, but then it'll just show up in the input device list here, and then you can adjust the gain, you can choose to monitor, and you're off and running. So, you know, very easy to record audio. Wait, and, you go just ahead. close the window. You're, aren't you going to record? I did, I'm, no, I'm not going to oh, record anything. No, okay. <laughs> no, 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 we, I've already got some here. Pre-recorded so, Yeah, so audio. I've got here, uh, a, uh, you know, a little uh, tutorial, it could be any audio, and I'm just going to edit it, I'm just going to E and uh, bring that into my timeline. I have a new project here, so I'm just going to say, okay, conform to that. We'll hit Shift Z to fit it. And here's here's what I love about. I've really discovered. I tried it out um, and discovered that it was faster and easier than Soundtrack Pro. And I love Soundtrack Pro, but this is even better because I'm already where I'm going to be working going forward. So I don't need a separate app. So one thing I do, I go down to this little switch here for the clip appearance, and I choose the biggest waveform I can. Okay, so I got a nice big waveform. I, I, I want to see how, there's also the clip height slider. How big can you make it, actually? Oh, yeah, that's true. You can, oh, you can make it really that's big. That's mono okay, size. Yeah. So let's, let's go for that. <laughs> let's go for that. And then um, right now, Shift-Z fit it to the window, but usually I'll, I'll command plus several times so I can really kind of see these individual waveforms. And it, it is a little odd to me, though, to see like half a waveform. Half, like, right, where's the right, other half? Right, but the other half looks the same. It's just upside down, right? It's like, you know, a moose on the head on the wall. Like, where's the rest <laughs> of the moose? So I don't know why I thought of that, but... <laughs> But there, this, there this gets the job done because frequently I'll do repeated takes and you'll be able to tell because you know, you'll listen and hear the same phrase over and over again. Sure. And you'll see that the, uh, the sound waveform looks identical from, oh, from one to the next. Um, so I'm actually not gonna play anything here, but I just wanna show you how easy the editing is. I don't even need to select the clip. So let's say I wanna cut out this here. Let's say this was a bad phrase. I listen to it, it's a bad phrase. I have skimming turned on. That's why we've got this red line moving. But I don't hear the audio skimming. Yeah, and let's say I've already played, so I'm past this point with the playhead, and like, oh, I need to cut this out. So um, yeah, actually audio skimming is not turned on. Let me enable it right there. Let me, let me zoom in so you can see. This will enable the audio skimming right there. Let's see if the tooltip will come up. Audio skimming. Shift S. Okay, Shift S, thank you. Um, and now it'll skim the audio as well. And I can make, I can sort of listen. And I don't need to click. This is what I love. Usually you would click and then cut it there. But without clicking, I'm just going to hit Command B, which will immediately blade right there, right? And then I can move over on this other side, Command B to blade it. And now this is, so that's part of what I love is that by using skimming, you don't need to click anywhere first. Just Command B, Command B, and it's fast. And you might be like, what's the big deal about clicking? You just click the button. Right. But, you know, over and over and over again, it adds up. Yes, yeah, so you get carpal click syndrome. Carpal click syndrome, yeah. Yes. And just, it takes more time. It is, it does take time. So here's the second cool thing, is when I select that to get rid of it and hit delete, automatically everything moves down and closes the gap because of the magnetic timeline, right? Exactly. So, um, and if I didn't want that, I could always shift delete and get a gap if I wanted to, keep, to do that. To keep the timing. Yeah, if I wanted to keep the timing. But frequently, for what I'm doing, it's a repeated phrase that I didn't say right the first time. So I'm just hitting delete, and then I go and I might find another thing, Command B, Command B, select delete, um, hit the back arrow to go back to that next and just keep playing. And I can't tell you how fast this has made uh, the process of my editing. 
Um, another thing is here, I'm a little hot here. So I maybe a little excited when I was speaking, a little hot. It's not bad, but if I wanted to change it, I can hit R for the range tool, and I can select a range, and then I can just lower that piece down. That's pretty slick and right? fast. Yeah, very, very fast and easy. And just, it feels just good to use the tool. I don't know, there's something about, there's That's, nothing clunky about it. It's very smooth. It to feels organic to what, to what you're doing. Yep, yep. And then, let's say I did want to create a gap here. So I'm a little bit further. I'm going to hit H for the hand tool, and that allows me to pan around, okay? Mm -hmm. So we used R for the range. We used Command B to blade. H for the hand tool. I'll go back to A for the anchor, the, the, the anchor, oh my goodness, I'm getting my motion uh, to show. Selection like, tool, A for, a for the, Or the tool. arrow tool, yeah. Yes. Now I'm going to blade this. Now let's say this, there's not enough space here. I wanted to have a little more breathing room because I'm, I'm just talking too much and, and people need to on see. Your own words or whatever. Yeah, or people need to see, have a little bit of a breather, so I want to sure. move it over. So normally you can't just, you know, you try to drag it and it goes right back, right? right. But if you hit P for the position tool, and then I could drag it, but um, it'll leave a gap. But you showed me something even cooler than that. So I'm going to undo that, uh, go back to where I was, select it. Rather than dragging it, uh, I could just type in a value, right? I want to move it forward, let's say 10 frames. 10 frames. Or let's say a whole second. I'll say uh, plus one point, one period. You see it shows up in the, uh, in the dashboard. Return, and immediately it moves it one second forward. And leaves a gap to keep the and leaves a gap. The spine. Yeah, so very, very quickly and accurately, I can create gaps, I can close gaps, I can edit out unwanted material, and before I know it, I've got a nicely edited piece. And once I get it all done, I'll actually switch back to something nice and small like this. Once I've got the whole thing edited, so I've got very small track. Right. And at this point, if you know, if you were doing. Um, if you were doing this to audio that was part of video, your video would be in here, but at this point you can cut in your B-roll, you can cut in all your other pieces, and you've got a perfect audio bed to cut to. It's, a, it's fantastic. I would never have thought of using Final Cut Pro as a, a sound editor, but I can see that it, it would be very fluid, very quick, even faster than a Soundtrack Pro in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's not something I would have done in Final Cut 7 because the tools just weren't really there, but this, this is just fast, and especially I don't have to go launch another app to do this. I'm just set to go right here in Final Cut Pro 10. Excellent. Well, uh, if, you, uh, if you do a lot of voiceover editing or cutting, um, or long takes with audio, even music, I would imagine, uh, it's, a, Anything. A, yep. it's a tremendous tool. You can work a lot faster. This is why we like Final Cut Pro 10. It really is a much faster tool than the, the, other, the other NLEs in terms of this uh, bread and butter type of stuff. So Mark, uh, what are you working on these days? Uh, so I've got a new tutorial out. So I've got my Motion 5 Fast Forward, basic training in motion and training in rigging and publishing for making effects for Final Cut Pro 10. But I've got a new uh, product out all about particles, particles in motion. Yeah, making using particles in motion to do all kind of interesting things with smoke and fire and and a bunch of other stuff um, that you can use particles for in your everyday projects, for titles, for transitions, for, for whatever you want. Excellent, and you'll uh, find that at uh, rippletraining.com. And uh, Mark, thanks for uh, showing us a really cool trip about uh, working with sound. And thanks for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.